and the canal is flowing above the river. So, as and when such kind of feature is there in the field, that a river or nala or drain is flowing below and the canal is flowing above, the feature is known as aqueduct. It is exactly opposite of the siphon. In siphon, canal was below, river was above in the siphon section. Here, canal is above and river is below. Number one. Number two, what happens to the pressures? The uh, river flow will be all the time subjected with what? Atmospheric mm -hmm. pressure. So also the canal flow, it will be also subjected with the atmospheric pressure. So on the basis of the pressure, both the flows, flow in canal and flow in river, they are subjected with the atmospheric pressure. Third aspect, to have the atmospheric pressure in the river flow, we need to keep sufficient distance between canal bed level and MFL. MFL stands for maximum flood level in the river. So maximum flood level in the river should never touch the bottom of the canal. So it assures the existence of freeboard. Sufficient freeboard is available. The maximum flood level is up to that vertical pier. The whole of the arch section provides what? Freeboard. The freeboard. That ensures that the river flow will be all the time subjected with what? Atmospheric pressure. So this is the next condition. Another condition. Can you tell me the next condition? What happens here? Bed level. The RBL, river bed level, as you can see now, is sufficiently below the canal bed level. The CBL canal bed level is at that level. <coughs> Sorry. It is a higher. So to sum up, the levels, canal bed level, CBL, is above RBL, number one. The MFL, maximum flood level, is sufficiently below the CBL, other way around, the FSL, full supply level in the canal, it is sufficiently above the MFL, maximum flood level in the river is much much below than the full supply level of the canal. So FSL is above the MFL, this is the condition. And the last one, both the flows are subjected with atmospheric pressure. So sometimes when this kind of large width is available and the canal, uh, the approach road, the people from that end wants to come on this side. So the canal top itself is made, converted into a bridge. But while converting it into the bridge, one care should must be taken, should always be taken. What is that, you know? That sufficient freeboard should be available between the slab, road slab and the canal. So that canal water all the time should be subjected with atmospheric pressure. This is the condition. So the closing of canal top is just for making the route available for people to go from this end of the river to another end of the river. It is, it is not serving any other hydraulics purpose, it is a transportation purpose, this is one. Most importantly, once again coming back to the point which we were discussing, how the site is governing the appropriate selection of type of CD work. Now we have seen types of CD works, number one, super passage, number two, siphon, number three, this aqueduct. So far we have discussed three, so let us talk about three only. This aqueduct is selected. Why they have not gone for siphon at this location? Haan. The width of the river, cross section of the river is having, uh, is very large. So if they would have provided the siphon, 
at Yoga. that point they would have to make the canal to go in the ground so that much is the level difference you can note the level difference whole of the length this much large length with which water flow is subjected with the pressure number 2 <coughs> number 3 again water has to come and against gravity it has to elevate up to cbl on downstream side this much long width this much pressure flow and this much elevation against gravity will result into loss of head tremendous head why siphon was provided there because the width of the nala was very less so the resulting head losses were also less and that's why siphon was appropriate there siphon is not appropriate here because of huge head losses then what is the solution as and when such kind of site is available as and when such large length is available width of the river is available then we take the canal which is coming from other end we take it in the same continuation the alignment is continued taking the canal on a bridge so aqueduct is nothing but the bridge which conveys the canal over the river from one end to the other end so as and when such bridge is conveying the canal over the river that feature is known as aqueduct is it clear yes. sir so uh, let us uh, draw the sketch let us see the features and let us not get confused with that slab it is only a transportation route but ultimately we will observe one thing that canal water throughout the length of that slab is subjected with atmospheric pressure so this is all about this. see the old construction of uh, this uh, stone masonry and uh, the intact water arch arch such a large span uh, with a, you can see very small uh, width of the pier due to arch action you can go for optimization of the width of the pier also a structural aspect is also equally important to note that uh, if that would have been in concrete with the without the arch the bridge uh, the pier width would have been very large so arch action facilitates you to adopt the slim mm -hmm. sections of the pier mm -hmm. that is what we are offering so any other clarification any doubt yes. let us see from the other side 